Good morning, everyone. My name is Chad Crossland, and I'm the marketing manager for Double Radius. For those who are new to Double Radius, we are a global value-added distributor of wireless networking equipment, offering the best in wireless solutions, technical services, financing programs, training, and more. And you can learn more at DoubleRadius.com. This morning, we're excited to bring you a webinar entitled Supercharge Your Network, which will be presented by Mimosa, who is a pioneer in gigabit wireless technology. Our main presenter will be David Stiff, VP in charge of product management. Um, additionally, towards the end, we'll be hearing about a recent Mimosa deployment from Keith Maxwell, who's a partner and founder of Northeast Remote Surveillance and Alarm. His company utilized Mimosa recently to provide a cost-effective, high-performance wireless alternative for extending a suburban community's fiber line video surveillance network. So before I begin, I have a few notes. Uh, there will be a time for Q&A at the end of the presentation. And during the presentation, you can type in your questions in the chat window. And these questions will be read and then answered during that Q&A time. So to get things started now, I would like at this time uh, to present uh, David Stiff, uh, Vice President in Charge of Product Management at Mimosa. All right. Hey, thank you very much, Chad. Um, really appreciate uh, you having us here today. And we've got some uh, very interesting content I think everybody will be uh, um, uh, quite pleased to see. I'm going to go over uh, what's been happening at Mimosa go over the uh, product and technologies, provide some updates of, of what we're doing, also go over some of the products we're shipping now and we plan to be shipping in the future. You know, it's interesting, um, you know, Mimosa represents really a new wave uh, in the evolution of wireless technology and where wireless is going. And hopefully throughout the uh, presentation today, you can get some uh, further insight of, of why that really is a, a reality. And I think before I jump right into the content slides, I've got some very very uh, insightful slides that, that kind of show what's happening um, in the broadband industry and where it's going. I think there's a couple, a couple points I wanted to go over just to keep in the back of our minds because there's, there's a couple shifts that are happening um, in the broadband in industry that are important to note. The first one is that um, with fiber, I think we all know that it's extremely fast, extremely reliable, but I think we also know that it's extremely expensive. As many of you know, trying to get fiber the locations you need it is not often um, a cheap process, especially if you have to dig trenches to lay, to lay it where it's going. So, so keep that in the back of our mind. The second one is that you know, wireless, um, as it's getting faster and the performance is getting better, it's getting to the point where it will be significantly faster than typical wireline networks at a fraction of a cost. So you have two interesting notes, fiber, fast but expensive, wireless, getting faster at a fraction of the cost of typical wireline. So kind of keep that in mind um, as we go through some of this. So if we take a look, um, really, uh, this is where our story begins. Right? So starting about three years ago, 2% um, of all the fixed broadband was wireless. And over the past two years, that's really come up uh, to about 5% over wireless, and, and really, um, it's Formosa's goal to build the technology that brings fiber speed and wireless quality um, to wireless broadband, and, and really, we want to push the broadband market to grow from 5% to 30% over the next few years, and that's really what we've got our, um, our engineering and R&D focus on, is how we make wireless go faster, make it more reliable, and make it cost effective to allow the WISP community to really grow um, broadband over wireless. So a little bit about Mimosa as a company. Um, we've been in business for three years. We were founded in uh, 2012. Our headquarters is in Campbell, California, which is in Silicon Valley, for those who aren't familiar uh, with where we're located. Um, we're actually growing very quickly. We just passed the 100 employee mark. We also just opened an R&D center in Turkey. So we're uh, expanding beyond just a, a Campbell uh, Silicon Valley based company. If you take a look at uh, where our employees are focused, 80% of our employees are focused on R&D. They're busy building the backhaul access and cloud technology to push wireless uh, to the next generation. 
As far as funding goes, we're a VC-funded company by a, a few very well-known um, venture capital, so that's a little bit about who we are. This is where it starts getting interesting. So if we take a look at the growth of traffic over the next years um, and really what it, what it means to our business, you know, today only about um, cellular, cellular only carries about 4% of the total Internet access. All the other traffic is going over Wi-Fi um, and wireline. And if you take a look at the expected growth from, from 2012 up to 20, 2017, um, most of the growth in the developing markets uh, is really going to be um, on the Wi-Fi and the wireline uh, side of this. You know, it's interesting, um, taking a look at this, you'll see that, um, uh, you know, there's a huge opportunity here with this growth, right? We've got uh, your traditional WISP market, right? You've got um, urban Wi-Fi and enterprise deployments really um, picking up Wi-Fi um, as, as one of the key strengths in the ability to, to grow uh, Internet access. And Mimosa is extremely well positioned with our high performance technologies to lead the way to make sure that Wi-Fi is one of the, the, the key, key technologies that is used here. Now it's interesting, if you um, take a look at the broadband growth uh, since 2012, you kind of take a look at, at what, what's happening here, you know, it's, it, it's pretty clear to see that DSL is in full decline. And, and this, to be honest, is great news for wireless ISPs, right? DSL is not keeping up um, with the speed. There's a huge opportunity. You know, but you might also notice on the slide that fiber is, it has some of the strongest growth. But remember what I talked about in the very beginning. You know, just by looking at its growth, you really need to dig in um, what the cost of it is because, you know, looking at the cost, fiber is about $1,200 um, per subscriber to deploy. And it's really being used today to replace DSL in very high density markets where the cost of deployment um, is, is justified. So that also means that um, you know, not everywhere it's, it's economically possible just to roll out fiber or cable for that matter. Uh, thanks. And then um, you know, if we look at the opportunity here, there's a huge opportunity for Wi-Fi to pick up that slack, really, where it's just extremely expensive to get fiber. Wi-Fi makes, uh, ma makes, makes a great opportunity. Again, this is where Mimosa uh, comes in. We're making the next generation of products that enable us uh, to take advantage of this reality. So let this uh, slide build for a second. You know, if you take a look, we call it before the modern Internet, um, most of the systems out there, especially the backhaul systems, T3s, DS3s, um, were really designed to handle symmetric traffic, right? You've got traffic, especially voice, the same amount of traffic going in both ways. And that's where a lot of these uh, legacy FDD microwave backhauls were designed to do, is to handle symmetric type of traffic. Um, and this is what you would typically see uh, in, in, a, in an urban pop uh, back in the days before the modern internet. It really was voice driven. And that's where the FDD, tech, FDD technology came in. But let's fast forward, taking a look at what the traffic looks like today, it is all, for the most part, downstream traffic, right? Um, you know, this, as we all know, you've got people looking at NetStream, um, doing over-the-top services. It's content that's being pulled from the Internet down into people's homes. And, you know, it's interesting. If you take a look at the predominance of what we would call over-the-top services, where you've got, um, you know, the types of Roku, Apple TV, you know, they're, they're doing everything they can to provide the content that customers want. Um, I was uh, listening to CNBC last week, and they were even saying that Apple and some of the other vendors are, are working very diligently on trying to get local TV access to be available over their services. So by doing that, that really puts the WISP community in a great place because now, um, if you know, as as these over-the-top services get more and more content on it, it makes it easier and easier for customers to, as we say, cut the cable, right? Because they don't have to give up or put a, a, a antenna up on their roof that's just for local TV. All right, so it's extremely important. Now, if we look at the technology side of this, um, you know, what this means is that if you have um, uh, symmetric traffic, you, you're not um, getting the best use of, of download capability. And this is where 
Mimosa's TDMA technology allows a very symmetric use of spectrum to adapt to these trends. So you can have the spectrum set up so you're setting up, let's say, 70% 70 70 of your channel spectrum for download traffic and 25% for upload. So you can be much more efficient with how you use your channel and your bandwidth um, instead of just blindly saying it's always going to be used for a 50-50 style of deployment. All right, uh, seeing if we're caught up, we're now looking at a slide that says fiber speeds at Wi-Fi costs. So, um, and this is where if we look at uh, where Vermosa is taking the industry, you know, we want to get to the point, and we will get there fairly soon, of delivering extremely high speed wireless connectivity that allows you to get, um, you know, fiber type speeds out into the locations um, where they need to be. This also needs to be done extremely uh, cost effectively as well. You know, today we're looking at, um, you know, 1.5 gigabit fi speeds, and in the future we'll be driving that up significantly as we get to our, um, you know, uh, eight stream technology that we are currently working on. And if we take a look at the market this is addressing, there's really three segments that, um, you know, we need to have uh, very cost effective solutions for. You know, the first one is being able to handle the mobile devices out there. So, you know, up to 100 meters away, this is your typical hotspot type of deployment where you're delivering fiber speeds to the pop and then providing uh, internet access for those types of devices. Then as we get out to the one kilometer space, we've got the urban connections. You know, this is your typical broadband. We're looking at ways of making this extremely affordable to use. For example, looking at self-install capability where instead of having to do a truck roll, somebody can take their device stick it on a window, mount it on the side of the house, uh, very easy to do self-installs, and automate the process of hooking up new subscribers and growing your subscriber base without having to go out and physically visit um, every single house. We'll talk about some of the technologies that we're working on uh, to make this a, a real viable solution. And then you've got your traditional, what I would call your traditional WIF type of deployments where you've got um, you know, truck rolls with side installs, you've got uh, high gained antennas aimed back at the access points um, for significantly long, you know, significantly longer distances of uh, up to uh, 10 kilometers. And that's really where we're looking at bringing the fiber speeds out to get the cost to the house home. So you're providing, again, significantly higher speeds than you can do today with typical wireline deployments. So, um, you know, the other thing to note, you know, as, as, we're, um, as we're talking about broadband style deployments is that we've got, um, you know, some of the new FCC regulations are, are dictating that what we would call broadband is actually delivering at least 25 megabits. So, you know, if you're providing a 2 meg link, you know, that's really not uh, considered broadband. Again, focus on Mimosa is building the technology that lets us do true high-speed broadband. So to make this possible, we need to get to the point where you can have high quality, high performance at a reasonable price. So let's take a look at what that means from a, a chip standpoint. Really, when we're looking at the, the fixed wireless um, landscape, we really have uh, what we would call a, a chasm in here, where you've got on the left-hand side, you've got commercial Wi-Fi. This is low cost, but low capacity, the typical type of Wi-Fi you find in consumer electronic pro uh, products. On the other side of the chasm, to get to high speed, you have custom FPGAs that are designed. These require high power, um, extremely cost with little scale, and they also only interoperate with themselves. So that means you're basically locked into um, you know, the same vendor on either end of the link. Uh, it makes some challenges as you're trying to grow and interoperate systems together. And that's really one of the, the, the challenges where we are. And if, if we take a look at, at really how we get this um, uh, client, what we call client and base station technology, you know, how it shifts over time, we can take a look at what's been done in the LTE spectrum, right, where you've got, you know, Qualcomm, NVIDIA, in, in, NVIDIA down at, at the low end of the scale making cost effective. Then you look at cost and performance, you're dealing with the, the likes of, of Qualcomm, Cambium. And then massive capacity at the LTE, you're getting to the, the high end of the, of the, of the products at a very, very high cost. So if we take a look at Wi-Fi, you kind of have the same, same spectrum of, of 
you know, low cost consumer grade to high end. And where we get into massive capacity is really where we start looking at the next generation of technology that uh, a company called Quantena Communications is working on to deliver eight by eight, you know, massive scale multi-user MIMO. They're really one of the only vendors out there today that are looking to tackle that problem. A lot of the existing Wi-Fi vendors are really looking to tackle the problem as it relates to mobile devices, laptops, not necessarily high capacity radio to radio type of deployments. And this is what um, uh, Mimosa is doing. We're actually leveraging the massive scale and capacity that the Quantena chips are providing. Today, they're providing a four by four 4MU um, type of technology, and in the future, as we talked about, and actually where the, the chips are, are being worked on right now, working on 8x8 technology, which will really, as you can see, get us to that next generation. And the reason Mimosa paired up with Quantena, it's actually a very, very, very important pairing together. Quantena, um, as, as we found, is the only Wi-Fi chip vendor that's working on solving the massive MIMO problem. They're exclusively developing this 8x8 MU MIMO technology. They've got strong financials. They also sell, as people might not be aware, they sell into the Tier 1 clients. So their, their technology is used inside of a lot of um, uh, set-top boxes, for example. And they're, you know, they've got a, a, a very strong business. You know, we're not, for example, us and a few handful of Wi-Fi vendors are not the only ones driving their business, which is important, right? We, we've, got a, you know, we've got a lot of stakes on that. But if you look at what Momos is doing with this technology, we have something very special uh, with Quantena. We have a three-year joint development for fixed outdoor applications. What that means is we, we really have a, a lock on the Quantena technology, uh, which, which is important as we grow the product. We also have a perpetual source code license. We're not taking off-the-shelf silicon and putting off-the-shelf technology into the market. We're actually going um, inside the chip, working directly with the source code, and creating advances in Wi-Fi. Um, as we'll talk about, and I'm sure people are well aware, uh, we're not doing just Wi-Fi, right? We're, we're using a technology called PDMA that allows us to squeak a lot more efficiency out of the spectrum than you can with standard Wi-Fi clients. So, um, you know, pairing together Quantana and Mimosa, we've got a, a great advantage to bring really high capacity, what we would call massive MIMO, into the marketplace. Let's take a look at um, what some of this technology allows us to do, and, and really what I would call a new dimension um, to multiplying the spectrum. I think, as we all know, spectrum is a very, um, a very important commodity for doing wireless broadband. And so what we're doing with our massive MIMO technology is really giving people the ability to drive higher throughput, higher client counts, and faster client speeds. But while doing that, we're using fewer APs, we're reducing the inference, interference, and we're improving our non-line of sight technology. If Spectrum were free, and Spectrum, well, Spectrum is free in some bands, but if Spectrum were unbounded, this wouldn't be a problem. You would just grab as much Spectrum as you wanted. But because unlicensed Spectrum um, is a technology that is bounded, there's only so much of it, you have to have some very clever ways of how to deal with the interference and make a usable solution um, with the products that are out there today. As I said, we've got the same Spectrum, but we're going to be utilizing it with technologies that allow us to do a, a lot more with the technology. So, um, you know, let's take a look at, at uh, what this technology uh, gives us the ability to do. And, and really, if we take a look at Massive MIMO, we're, we're looking at the future of wireless to scale the capacity um, and work in higher interference environments. So as I said, you know, today we've got a lot of, um, you know, two by two clients. You know, you're getting up to 450 megabits per second. You know, when we jump up to four by four, you know, if you're doing one-to-one -one communication, um, you know, you can get up to one gigabit per second. But the reality is that as you look at the cost structure, you know, you get to the point where your client or CPE radios need to be at an affordable price to make broadband effective. So what we're doing with, um, you know, some of the MU MIMO technology and the multiple streams, for example, is, is splitting them up so you can talk to, um, you know, two clients at the same time. And this provides a, a huge benefit, so you're not just relying on extensive 4x4 on, on, on either side, especially when we get to the access point um, in, in the client world. You know, the other thing that we're doing, for example, is, is when you're dealing with line of sight, which most of the um, you know, fixed out there deployments are when, you, when you're dealing with the backhaul, 
you, you get two polarizations on each radio, right? So each stream needs to be um, polarized or spatially separated to make it work. Um, because there's really little multipath you get in line of sight. So what what we're doing here is, you know, for for example, uh, we are using um, two streams on one channel and two spatial streams on another channel. So we're utilizing this um, uh, multi-user capability to provide resiliency and huge flexibility in your, in your deployments. So we're providing some uh, great technologies that allow us to um, drive faster and be more reliable. Now, multiply that from 4x4 four four to 8x8, eight eight, and you can see the huge growth and scale that we get. Now we're going from you know, potentially two 500 megabit connections to four 2.5 gigabit connections. So substantial improvement with substantial reliability. And this um, massive MIMO is not something that, this massive MIMO is not something that is complete rocket science, it's unproven out in the world. Massive MIMO has been proven by um, 4G um, vendors and technology every single day, right? Um, you've got 4x4 MIMO, spatially distributed. Here's a picture of a, an LTE tower, if you've seen these. Um, to make it work um, at the frequencies they're at, they basically spatially distribute the antennas to make sure that on the receiving end, the, tech, the, the signals can be basically discreetly understood by the remote devices of the handsets. Um, you know, some of the lab testing, interesting, is at, at NTT, they're looking at 16 by 16 MIMO. You know, it starts getting very complicated, very expensive, needs a lot of power, but the technology definitely is, is out there, is, is definitely out there to do that. Now, the nice thing is if you're looking at this saying, wait a minute, are, are we going to have to have these massive antenna arrays that span, you know, 20 feet? Um, you know, as you get up in the spectrum in higher frequencies, you actually don't have to spatially separate the streams like you're seeing here um, on this pole. You know, you can actually put them, uh, put the antennas much closer together. But essentially what we want to get at the fact is that we're borrowing very proven carrier grade technology but driving them into low cost Wi-Fi to make the products cost effective to deliver. So how is the MOSA um, using this massive MIMO? First is by using multi-channel aggregation. As I talked a little bit, um, instead of using a stream for client, for example, what we can do with our backhaul access points is that we can use multiple channels. We do two streams per channel, so that way we get high speed up to 80 megahertz per channel, and also we get the resiliency of having two separate channels. So if one channel fails, the other channel can be up. If one channel you know, gets interference or a DFS hit, for example, it can renegotiate to a clear channel and not drop the entire link. So there's a lot of, a lot of innovation in how we're doing our multi-channel aggregation. On the multi-user MIMO side, this is where we start talking about higher AP capacity for our upcoming access point technology. So this allows us to be able, to, with our antenna design, to communicate to two clients at once, for example, using a multi-user MIMO. We've got some very interesting, if you take a look at our, our outdoor access points that we'll be coming out with, even though they're called 360s, they're really not an Omni in 360s. They're really four sector antennas in there. It's quite interesting how it's deployed. You can imagine now, at, with a stream per sector, um, you can get some very, very interesting use cases for multi-user MIMO by having having separate streams coming out uh, based on different directions from the antenna. You'll be seeing, as we get closer and closer to delivering this, you'll see some very interesting technology coming out around that. The other one is around beam forming and uh, non-line of sight. You know, uh, what we're going to be doing with our um, CPE devices, oftentimes where we use the inbuilt antennas, is using beam forming to help us direct or steer the, the, the signals where they need to go. Instead of having to put a directional antenna on a roof and have someone physically up on the roof aiming it to try to get the right signal strength, imagine having a, a, a device that you can put on the window or put on the outside of the wall that uses MIMO to actually um, directed signals in the appropriate direction towards the access point. So it'll bring a whole new um, ease of deployment, low cost deployment capability um, to the clients. And then um, with the development of our cloud technology and uh, GPS, GPS sync, we're, we're looking at ways, new ways of dealing with interference. So how do you use um, 
spectrum wisely, and how do you reuse spectrum where it can? For example, if we have a dense AP deployment, trying to pick the optimum channels. If you have backhaul co-located together on the same tower, um, you know, how can you reuse the spectrum so you don't have to burn five channels, for example? We have uh, a lot of uh, interference um, uh, technologies that allow us to basically sync the devices together, transmit at the same time, so we're not self-interfering with each other. Again, this is all designed to make um, make us be extremely spectral efficient. And, and anybody that has um, rights to tower locations know that when you have one pole, it's not always possible just to go get 10 more poles and stick up on there and space them 50 feet apart. That's, we might want that, but that's not often a reality. So we're building the technology that allows you to deploy um, you know, many access points and co-located together. Now let's take a look at um, really what we get from um, beam forming itself. You know, this is an outline of a standard uh, 90 degree panel pattern, right? So you've got a, a 90 degree uh, going out there. Now what beam forming does is it gives you up to a 3 dB gain by smartly beam forming or aiming the patterns that it sends out. Um, and it does this by you know, modifying the, the, the phase and the amplitude of the signals coming out and, and basically um, beam forms the, the patterns. And 3 dB is a significant gain that we get out of this. Now, let's take a look at how we'll be using that. What MU MIMO does or is it allows us to do simultaneous downstream communications to multiple clients. So in this case, um, the access point has learned the locality and direction of client A. So it's, it's formed its um, beam forming patterns to optimize the signal to noise of client A. We also can do this at the same time for client B as well. And the system is smart enough that it will learn to create a notch in the signal pattern in the direction of client B when it's talking to client A. And then when it's talking to client B, vice versa, it will notch client B's signal so it's not interfering with client A. So this allows us to have extremely um, high throughput to multiple clients um, at the same time. Very, very important advances in being able to have higher density and higher throughput. Um, you know, as, as we're all in the, in the business here, we know that the, the more subscribers at high quality you can put on your access point, you know, the, the better the ROI is on that equipment because you can have more subscribers, pay more money, buy higher services. So it's extremely, this is extremely important technology that we're bringing to the market. Now, um, you know, if we take a look at if we take a look at um, you know how we're modifying Wi-Fi for fixed access, it, it, it's quite important because you know what we're doing here is not your standard Wi-Fi that you get in your your home Wi-Fi router. Um, you know, if you look at um, uh, our TDMA technology, what it's what it's doing is really allowing us to have a, a much higher MAC five level efficiency as you get your client counts high. Um, our, our our basically spectral use of, of uh, of our of our phi is much greater. As you can see with TDMA, um, you know you're constantly driving, you know at least 25% more efficiency out of your spectrum than you are when you're using a CSMA, which is the the standard collision avoidance. And, and the reason we're the reason this is possible is that uh, because the radios are synchronized together with GPS um, or without, we have a non-GPS mode as well. We don't have to waste the collision and, and a lot of the acknowledgement bases that you do in standard Wi-Fi. Standard Wi-Fi has been designed to be very polite, very forgiving, but often at the expense of throughput. TDMA has been designed for systems that can talk together and um, synchronize themselves so that they can transmit extremely, extremely efficiently. And th this is important. The other thing to note that um, you know, TDMA efficiency is not just in 5 gigahertz, right? This technology can be used across the spectrum. So it's, it's not limited to unlicensed band. It's really a, a physical layer, um, you, know, you know, MAC layer technology that can be applied. And you'll see this in the future from us, you know, providing products that go beyond just uh, standard uh, 5 gigahertz. As, as I said, TDMA is much more efficient than Wi-Fi in high capacity networks. All right. The other thing that TDMA does is it enables us to reuse spectrum. You know, what you're seeing on the screen here is a picture of two of our uh, up-and-coming 
90 degree sector APs um, deployed back to back on the same channel. We've got uh, up to 90 dB of isolation between the radios, and because we can synchronize um, uh, synchronize the transmissions of them together, they won't self-interfere with, with each other, which is hugely important. Remember, as I talked about MU MIMO being able to talk to multiple clients at the same time, you can now take that with the GPS TDMA sync. You can co-locate, use the same channel, and now um, be able to have extremely efficient use of your spectrum. And that's that's some of the uh, very interesting technology advances that uh, Mimosa is bringing to the market. So here's an example. Um, well, not an example. This, this is our uh, backhaul lineup that we have. So um, we're currently shipping the B5 and the B5C. These are our point-to-point uh, -point, um, uh, backhaul products. The, the B5 has been designed so it's a, an, an all-in-one solution. The radio um, and the antenna dishes are all uh, all designed together. It's extremely lightweight, extremely easy to deploy. Um, maximum power is up to 30 dBm. We also have our B5C, which is our connectorized version. Um, you know, one thing to note that some people aren't aware of is that the B5C has a wider frequency range than our B5 does. It supports operation in the 4.9 and in the 6 gigahertz um, uh, frequency. So um, if you have customers that are looking for opportunities here, uh, definitely make sure that they understand that the B5C uh, could be a solution for them um, in the uh, out of the 5 gigahertz range. And uh, this information is, is all available. I'm not going to go through the, the details of everything. This is all available on our website. We have our B5 Lite, um, which is a, a new entrance that we'll be uh, releasing very shortly. Uh, this is an extremely well-priced product. It's priced at $300 a link. It's our MSRP. This provides a, um, basically a 2 by 2 solution up to 750 megabits of IP traffic between these. So a great way to have a low-cost, high-performance uh, link um, when you need to put one in. For those not familiar, for those not familiar with our access point lineup, um, uh, towards the uh, late summer fall time frame, uh, we'll be introducing some new products for uh, access point deployments. We have, as I've shown some examples of, we have our what's called the A590. This is our 21 dBi. 90 degree panel that we have. The design goal of here is uh, it allows WISPs to basically, you know, mount these as I showed, co-located back to back with uh, 90 dB of isolation between them and effectively use Spectrum for um, providing uh, client CPE access. We are also providing CPEs that I'll talk about on our next slide. We'll also be coming out with the A5360 in two flavors, the 18 dBi and the 14 dBi. As I've said, these are, um, while we call them 360s, they're not your traditional Omni. You know, they're a very high gain 14 dBi and 18 dBi solution that has four 90 degree helical patterns on it for um, optimized uh, Wi-Fi coverage in a, in a pattern. The CPE lineup um, we have, we've got a, a, a variety of CPE devices. We've got um, the C5, we've got um, built-in antennas connectorized and also the C5i, which has been designed to uh, simply mount up on your wall and, and provide self-installs. Again, all this information um, is up on the website. Uh, these, will, um, again, will be uh, rolling out uh, towards the end of the year. Now, to help, help customers manage the products, we have a, a great cloud offering called the Mimosa Cloud. Um, the first, the first product we released on this is our, what we call Mimosa Design. Um, the design, there's actually uh, 1,900 ISPs using this design tool already. I think it's one of the most advanced web-based planning tools out there where you can actually put two, two links in and it will show you the um, uh, elevation pattern between those and help you very quickly assess if you have the ability to maintain a link and what kind of link quality that you can get. Uh, a very powerful tool. You actually don't need an account. Uh, sorry, you, you, you can just get an account. Anybody can go to our website and sign up and definitely recommend you take a look at this. Even if you haven't used the Mimosa products yet, 
you'll get an idea of how we like to build our products. They're easy to use, very, very well thought through. Um, we're also coming up when we release our access points with the view shed concept. So um, we'll give you an idea of what the coverage of your access points will be over the terrain, um, terrain that's uh, specified in, in the design tool. So some very, very impressive uh, uh, design elements. We're also capturing live spectrum into the cloud. When you have um, Mimosa APs or uh, backhaul deployed, um, you know, they're constantly collect, collecting all of the live spectrum out there. There's actually no need to disable the radio to get that. This is being pumped up into the cloud, and I like to think of it, it's, it's sort of like a TiVo for your spectrum. We provide free 24 hours of recorded spectrum uh, that allows you to um, visualize what's been happening and uh, see the effect of that. Um, we also, for those who aren't interested in deploying in the cloud, we have um, you know, a, a full RESTful API and with an upcoming release we'll have SNMP available so we can integrate Mimosa products into many of the, the existing um, multi-vendor uh, network management uh, products that are out there today. But of interest, we're actually working on, on some interesting technology that will allow, via the Mimosa Cloud, the ability to manage any third-party products using SNMP or being able to uh, connect into the device. So, so something that we're looking at rolling out in the future, you know, more than likely we'll have the deployment work with the proxy box you install. They can collect the local information, report that up to the cloud, so you can get a very nice, easy-to-use cloud solution for Mimosa and the other products that you have in your network. Here's just a, a picture of, of, of what we call our alpha network. We have a series of access points deployed um, throughout Silicon Valley that we use for, for testing, vetting out new features, and just gives you an example of, of, of how easy and, and visual our, um, our, our cloud system is. Um, you know, with the free cloud benefits, um, some of the things that you'll get is basically through our uh, support um, if you share your network with support, they get some great visibility and they can often go in and help you maximize the throughput of your links by looking into the cloud, one of the benefits of having a cloud-based solution. And we're also um, on a regular basis providing Mimosa Community Awards. We've got prizes for what we call the best links. Um, if you share the links with us, uh, Mimosa will periodically go in and award what we consider a, either a very challenging, interesting deployment and um, provide some uh, community awards around that as well. One of the other big benefits of Mimosa is that we actually have real people providing real support. So when you need help, there's a company behind you, uh, unlike some of the other vendors out there, that will, will actually respond to your needs. They can help you, as I, as I talked about, share your network with us. We can go in and, and find out what's going on. Um, and you know, online we've got all the product specifications. We have extensive frequently asked questions, installation guides, user guides. Our folks in support have actually gone out and done many installs, so they know the products inside and out, and they're more than willing to help you. Um, to contact them, you'll notice when you're when you're um, you know on the website, there's a, a box in the bottom right hand corner that says chat with us. That's how we like to chat, and there's actually people here that will start talking to you there. I can actually see them looking through the window right now. We, we, we really believe in support and we staff support to, to be able to have enough resources to interact with our customers, get on the phone, you know, once, if there's a problem, uh, talk and continue. All right, so let's go over some real world examples of customers that are using our, our products. Um, the first one is Shelby Broadband. And um, what Shelby Broadband, uh, they're located in Kentucky. They deploy the B5 and B5C pro products, and they have a lot of towers that they deploy on, and, and their real challenge is with co-location. You've got you know, limited tower space, and they need to be able to put um, multiple um, backhaul devices on the same tower. So you know, they're looking at problems of, of uh, angular separation, spatial separation, and this is where TDMA really came in and helped them solve their problem by being able to be um, extremely efficient with spectral use. So what they were able to do with the Mimosa products, um, you know, they were able to take their 3.6 mile links, go from 80 to 300 megabits per second. They were able to take their 14 mile links from 40 to 160 megabits per second, all while significantly reducing the latency on their links. Um, 
They also eliminated the need to have 15 feet apart from all their antennas, which made deployments uh, definitely quite challenging. Um, another uh, another uh, great example of someone being very successful with the MOSA is Whisper Wireless Internet. Um, uh, they're located in, in Illinois and they had a, um, a large deployment where they were replacing a lot of uh, uh, Cambium products out there. Um, you know, and they're, they're really, they liked the MOSA products because they were light, they were low power, and it really helped them change the game of how easy um, it is to deploy. Um, and the interesting thing to note, well, while they while they often didn't need the you know 80 megahertz capacity of really high performance links, they were able to deploy the products, and they know that there's room to upgrade the links as their bandwidth needs grow. So you know, even though a B5 might only occupy the, you know 20 megahertz delivering 220 megabits per second, they have the plan and the capabilities with the existing products to jump that up to 40 megahertz when traffic demands. So they've got uh, built-in um, capacity increases as needed. And again, they talk about how lightweight the product is. It's extremely easy to install. You know, the GPS capabilities were a real game changer for them, allowing them to, to really make the uh, best use of the spectrum that they have. So the, the, last, the last couple of deployments we'll talk about are, are a very interesting use case where, where often you're dealing with you know, urban technology with very, very dense deployments of Wi-Fi. Um, and, and in this case, it's an interesting um, deployment for the Mimosa products because we're using these, they're using the power here to actually blow through a lot of noise in an urban environment. So they're maintaining 1.7 gigabit uh, fire rates to very short links um, and, and getting a, you know, extremely high throughput. So, so oftentimes there's a, a deployment model where you might not think uh, a B5 makes sense when it really does for, for short links. Now, there's even some really short links. This is an example of a, a Super Bowl party hosted by Bud Light where we're using a, um, they used a very short link. Here you can see a B5 on a building uh, going over to an outdoor area where there's a party they needed to get internet access. And they just didn't have the ability to get internet access out in the middle of the parking lot. So there's some very interesting use cases where you can overcome a lot of interference if you have enough power to basically blow through the interference that's out there. From a long distance standpoint, we've got an example here of a link that we have. This is going from the eastern bay, eastern area of uh, Silicon Valley Bay Area, shooting um, 60 miles all the way up into Napa. So this was a, an actually a, a test that was put up to see the long distance capabilities. So in this case, we're using two 80 megahertz channels getting over 600 megabits of throughput um, at a very long link. You can see this is done with a, a B5C and a rather large antenna. But just to show you the capabilities here, you can get um, extremely high throughput um, at extremely, extremely long lengths. The other interesting thing to note, you know, we're really, even though we're, we're going across part of Silicon Valley, that's a very dense, a lot of interference, we're really just going over the top of it, going mountaintop to mountaintop and able to, to kind of avoid and, and blow through any of the interference that's out there. We have another a very challenging deployment that's over water uh, long distances. This is uh, the Farallon Islands um, of, up by San Francisco where there's a marine sanctuary. And what we've done here is deploy a, a dual link between San Francisco and the Farallon Islands. The reason that a dual link was deployed is just it's very, very challenging to get out there and the scientists need the internet access for doing a lot of their research. So it made sense to put a redundant link in here. Um, and even though our, our devices are weather, de definitely weatherproof, um, because of the really challenging environments, we went ahead and put them in these uh, NEMA enclosures as well. What you're looking at here is two 40 megahertz links, 200 um, megabits per second fire rates over 30 kilometers over water in very harsh environments. So again, an example of a, a challenging deployment that was tackled with Mimosa gear. And I think the final one here, this, this one I actually like because it's a very different type of deployment, is Mimosa gear is deployed on ferries, right? So this is a, a, a setup where we've got ferries going back and forth that have um, uh, B5Cs on them. Then at the terminal side, they have uh, B5Cs as well, and they have the setup. So no matter where the ferry is along its path, they always maintain connectivity. 
they're able to um, create basically a, a shore to shore handoff. They've got a, a 1 by 40 megahertz link running, um, and the users are experiencing about 100 megabits of IP throughput. Um, before Mimosa, they were not able to maintain a reliable link, and the commuters um, love the service because now they're able to stay online uh, as they traverse the ferry. So that concludes the um, Mimosa portion um, of the webinar. And I'm very happy to have Keith Maxwell with us, who is the partner and founder of Northeast Remote Surveillance and Alarm. They're a, a Mimosa user. And um, Keith, I'd like to go ahead and uh, hand the webinar over to you to share some of uh, the success you've had with the Mimosa gear. Thank you. Uh, I just started with the Mimosa gear. I have two links up and running. Prior to that, I had been using a, a lower-end product without the customer support. And uh, it was a really long learning curve. Uh, with your product, I was basically able to put it on the pole, put it on automatic. Everything worked great. I had a few questions. I could go right to the chat. You know, we could do Team Viewer. And it was a real breath of fresh air to have the ability to you know, get some support at the price point where we're at. And uh, basically, the, what we use your product for is we had a fiber in place, and uh, they wanted to extend cameras out further into the community for a camera project. And uh, we used basically two links to extend it another five miles in either direction so we could cover the whole town with our backhaul. And that's pretty much where we're at with it. It's excellent performance. We're getting 1.4 to 1.6 gigabit, and the customer's real happy with it. Uh, basically, we run about 100 cameras both directions where they're accessed by the housing authority as well as the law enforcement, and then we have uh, additional Wi-Fi into their police cars. So it's been, it's been a real cost-effective, affordable solution, and my customer is extremely happy with it. Yeah, uh, great to hear, Keith. Um, thanks for sharing the success you've had with that. And you know, I think one of the one of the strengths I heard in there is that you know when you had questions, there's there's someone on support that was able to talk with you, go into the the team viewer, and actually you know kind of handhold you through some of the questions and, and make sure that you're you're up and running. So um, yeah, Absolutely. definitely. Yeah, the other cus the other sure. uh, product I was using had a forum involved, and it's just it wasn't there. It's you know when you're at a customer and you have a problem, you need immediate support. You know you can't wait this for somebody to get back to you on a forum. But that's the biggest advantage, and as well as performance and cost. Okay, great. Yeah, all all, all great uh, to hear. So. Chad, should we um, hand the webinar back over to you and uh, use the remaining time for uh, Q&A, if we have any that's been queued up? Yeah, thanks for the presentation. And if anybody has any uh, specific questions that or anything they would like to have anything reviewed, feel free to uh, enter that into the chat. Um, one thing maybe you could clarify as well is um, just how Mimosa works in the high interference areas? Um, yeah, so, you know, how, how we work in the high interference areas is that um, there, there's, there's actually several different techniques that we deploy to allow us to, to deal with interference because you, know, you, you, you run into interference um, from many different sources, as we all know. And you know, one of the ways we do is that we have our, our dual channel mode where you know, we, we take our uh, a Wi-Fi chip and we basically send stu two streams out over one channel and then we send the other two streams out over a separate channel. So we can do that all within the same, um, uh, within the same uh, backhaul product itself. You don't have to actually have to have two separate dishes up there. So, so that gives us the resiliency of dealing with, you know, um, different megahertz widths of, of traffic going over a channel. So, you can basically have the redundancy of what we call dual link. And that also deals with, you know, if you have a problem on one link, the link can go down. Um, it can find a better channel. Um, the second we have dealing with um, interference is um, our co-location technology. 
So with our, our GPS sync that I talked about, you know, we have the ability to, um, to, to, to synchronize the products together so you can have um, two transmitters close to each other but transmitting on the same channel. And we do that by, uh, with our TDMA, we can sync the transmission. So when one, one AP is transmitting, the other one's not trying to receive, right? So they basically transmit and receive at the same time slot so they can hear what's going on and they can get the traffic sent out in the direction, or the signals in the direction they need to. Um, another one is called um, Spectrum Analyzer. Right? Spect the nice thing about Spectrum Analyzer is without having to turn the radio off, it gives you the ability to see um, what frequencies are in use. And that constant um, spectrum analyzer is great as a visual tool. It's also used by a technology we have called Auto Everything. It's constantly looking at the best channel on both the send and receive side of a link and can figure out which channel bandwidth to use and which channel to use. So we've actually, in a, in a, a shortly uh, upcoming release uh, that's going through our QA process right now, we're doing some, uh, you know, some great enhancements to auto everything that I think customers will be, be quite excited about. So, for example, we'll be able to, um, if, if, if you can say, I want to use maximum 80 bandwidth, 80 megahertz of bandwidth, but if we can't maintain the link and we've tried all the NCS rates, we will automatically ratchet that back down to 40 or 20 um, as need be to maintain that link. And then as, as interference dis dissipates, we'll be able to ratchet that back up. Okay, I have a question about uh, is the GPS integrated or an add-on? Um, yeah, the GPS is integrated into our products. So for the, the B5 and the B5C, uh, GPS is integrated into there, so it just uh, comes as part of the product. And with the B5 Lite we're coming out with, it doesn't have GPS, but we have a, a synchronization mode that uh, doesn't rely on, on GPS. Okay, and a question, what is the actual number of CPE devices that can be linked to an AP and at what channel width? Yeah, great, great question. I know that's all often on the, the top of people's minds. So what, what we're, um, you know, we're, we're doing our uh, product development right now, and we don't have the exact number of, of CPEs, but from a connectiv connectivity standpoint, we're shooting for 250 clients. Um, being able to connect to an AP, and you know, I think that w where the reality comes in really is how many CPE devices at what distance can be connected at a specific uh, service level, um, and that's really what I want to be able to publish to the community once we get those numbers out. Being able to provide real numbers for real throughput, you know, so saying uh, when you have a hundred CPEs connected, what is the type of bandwidth that can be that can, that can be handled um, with our uh, MU MIMO type technology and with uh, aggressive throughputs. So as we come out with our products, we'll be getting more clarity on, on, on really the, the numbers and the bandwidth requirements, so you'll be able to, to do some business analysis of, of what makes sense for deployments. Okay, another question about the power of the B5 light. Um, is there plan to increase the power above 20 dBm? Yeah, so um, great question. The B5 Lite at uh, 20 dBm is, is currently how the product is designed. Um, I think if, uh, if, if customers are looking for a product that provides longer distance coverages in the B5 Lite pr price range, you know, you probably look for a connectorized version of that that will allow different type of antennas to be installed on it. Okay, I have another question here. Does, does Mimosa provide solution assessment and recommendation of products for different solutions? Uh, for example, a similar ferry solution that uh, this, this viewer would like to have uh, helps, some help with solving? Um, yeah, yes, definitely. So there's there's a couple ways to do that. You know, for your simple point-to-point -point links, they're not always simple, but we have our design tool in the web. You can go to, you put GPS coordinates or put um, lat long or even just an address if you have that, and we can tell you if there's a, a, a reasonable chance of getting a link there. 
We also have our, our support, so you can just go to the support chat and ask for help, right? We can, we can help design solutions. If it's a simple answering power level questions um, uh, or getting into more um, uh, detail, we actually have RF designers on staff. We have a, a couple guys that actually um, deploy and manage WISPs in their, in their background. So we, we have folks that can actually talk to you that have done this before and, and will definitely help guide you, especially if you have tricky things that are beyond just you know, point to point a certain number of miles away. So use that chat window to come in and ask us questions and we'll help you out. Okay, I think a general question just on, uh, looks like, um, just a reminder on the timing of the, of the newer products uh, being delivered. Yeah, so um, from a product uh, product availability standpoint, the point-to-point the -point products are available today. The B5 Lite um, um, is actually in beta uh, right now, and we expect the B5 Lite, you know, within the next month to be uh, available. And then the access points and CPEs that we reviewed today will be available uh, later in the year. We're really looking at, um, you know, a fall time frame for the delivery of those. And we'll be uh, we'll be updating the communities, you know, as as we get closer to the availability. Okay, I think we're about at an hour here, so we should probably uh, end here. I appreciate everybody's questions today, and appreciate Mimosa making the presentation, and Keith as well, uh, offering his perspective on his recent uh, deployment. Um, if there are any other questions that folks have, feel free uh, to. Uh, reach out to Double Radius as well as to, you'll see some email addresses on your screen right now. Um, and you can also reach uh, sales team at doubleradius.com. We'll be happy to answer any questions you may have as well that way. So um, thanks again for the presenters. Thanks to Mimosa and to Keith. And we will be uh, ending this presentation momentarily. And if you could just take a moment to uh, fill out the, the brief survey, that would be great. Thanks, everybody, for attending. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Chad, for uh, inviting us. Welcome. Thank you.